I have very strong mixed feelings about the new SH Figure Arts Boba Fett with the throne. I've got this empty spot on my shelf that I used to display all of the kind of Disney Plus era figures and I wanna see which Boba Fett is gonna make it. So we're gonna look at that today. I've been collecting figure arts for almost as long as I've been collecting the Black Series. They definitely have their pros and cons. I think overall they're not as fun to play with with Black Series figures because they are just a little bit more fragile. But let's take a look at the new Book of Boba Fett Throne Room Boba. If you live in the US, you can order from Amazon Japan, Amazon.jp. You just have to make a new account. This came out to about $112 USD after tax and shipping. The box is almost the exact same size as the Emperor Palpatine with Throne, so that was kind of cool to see. The Palpatine came with three figures. It would have been really cool to see if Boba came with like one of his droids or something like that. I was really excited to get this figure because we don't have a proper Book of Boba Fett look for Boba. We've only had the Mandalorian look a couple times in the Black series. I'm sure they're working on one. I hope they're working on one. And also this just comes with so many different like props and accessories that it's just really exciting to see this much like playability in one box. You know, in the Black series we get maybe one gun or one weapon with a figure and so this just has so many possibilities. If you're not too familiar with figure arts, especially for armored characters, there's a lot in this that might surprise you. There's a lot that just makes these a little bit less fun to play with than Black Series figures. They're much more fragile. I have broken so many little figure arts parts over the years, and they're so much more expensive, so it's a lot more frustrating when you do break a piece. The Black Series has a lot of pliability in their plastics, and with figure arts, if you bend something a little bit too far, it just snaps, and their parts are a lot smaller sometimes as well. Really nice sculpted detail on the throne. I think the patina on the bronze is a little bit heavy. Then we also have the jetpack here. Some nice scratches on this one. We will compare this to the other figure arts a little bit later as well as the black series. And then it has this removable rocket here. No surprise there. You can switch it out with the alternate piece there. These heads are weirdly good and bad at the same time. The face printing on it is so faint, like his eyes the whites of his eyes are the same color as his skin, and it, I don't know, it, it looks okay on camera, but it's even worse in person. I just don't think that these look great, especially with how good figure arts can look. His little gaffy stick here, really nicely painted. You can see that little bit of red paint on there. That's something that the Black Series wouldn't ever do. It almost looks like there's a little bit of a gold wash, or like a gold dry brushing on the tip there. Then we've got some blast effects here. Interestingly enough, they clip into the jetpack, but the little booster piece from the jetpack is actually the part that pops off, rather than with the Black Series where we just have those blast effects plug right into the jetpack. It's a little bit more toyetic that way to just have the blast effects go into the jetpack, and I noticed that that's a big difference between Figure Arts and the Black Series, where Black Series doesn't really have alternate hands unless they're completely necessary, and like for instance swappable heads, it's a better result, but it's not as like, it's hard to really describe it. The, the word toyetic is the, the word that people use, but you just want it to kind of feel like real life where it's like the helmet goes on the character. You don't switch your head out when you put on a helmet, the helmet goes on. And I feel like that's kind of the philosophy in the Black series a lot more than with Figure Arts. Figure Arts is more about having like every possible appearance of this character be creatable, even if it's like incredibly complex, which we're about to look at in a second with how this jetpack goes on. And then I think it'll be a little clearer what I mean once I can show you. Often with figure arts, I feel like the proportions on armored characters are a little bit off. The heads either feel too big or too small. It's almost as if they are a robot where their helmet is their head versus like an actual helmet over a head. But the sculpted detail on the legs is really nice. Some decent articulation. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video, but it is really nice to see these boots and this belt on a figure finally after like over a year from when Book of Boba Fett aired. Let's bring in the Black Series Throne Room Boba, as well as the original Figure Arts Boba release from The Mandalorian. I did remove the soft goods skirt from the front because it was just hiding so much of the figure and it didn't really look like it was supposed to. It looked like a full 360 skirt that went around him. I will let your eyes do the work here and kind of see what you need to see in terms of comparing these three. I do of course need to mention that I did weather the Boba Fett on the left, so the green that you're seeing on the left is a little bit darker and more muted than it looks straight out of the box. I unfortunately don't have one straight out of the box to show you. Looking at the two Figure Arts figures side by side, I was never too crazy about the one on the left. He looks a little bit bulkier actually than the one on the right, 
But I don't know, something about the proportions, I just really like the Black Series one better. I do have a custom Fat Clone head on mine, which I will show you a little bit later as well. But here, it's just kind of what you need to see in terms of understanding the differences between the two here. But I'm not going to go through and list every single difference or similarity. So what Figuarts does, so instead of having just like empty holes, even on the back of the figure, they put these little pegs in there that I guess are a little bit accurate to how it looks in the show when his jetpack is off. And so you actually, just to get the jetpack on, you have to pop this back piece off and then you have to remove each of these three little pegs and then you have to put them somewhere safe so you don't lose them in case you ever want to sell this or just display him without the jetpack which I don't know why you would so all of those need to be removed just so we can like actually unclog those holes for his jetpack it just seems so extra and unnecessary but I understand why they do it and I guess it's kind of cool that there is a toy company that sort of treats their figures this way but I often just find myself more annoyed and more at risk of breaking something than than I care for. And I also do wish that the soft goods skirt laid a little bit more straight. It looks really nice when you pull it down, but it does kind of swoop out a little bit, which if you're putting him in an action pose where there's gonna be wind blowing in his little skirt there, then I think it looks okay. When you replace the hands, it does take a little bit of force. So you do need to be careful not to damage the figure depending on where you're holding it. And even just getting the hand onto the gun, it did feel like the gun was gonna snap at some point. It's just this really brittle plastic, which if you've ever handled a figure arts figure, you know what to expect. It does give a much cleaner look for the weapons. It just feels like it's a little bit sharper in detail than on the Black Series. But again, it's just is not pliable. It's not kid friendly. It is barely me friendly. I broke several pieces of my former figure arts boba. And with the Black Series, when you're posing them, you sometimes will like kind of force them into certain positions or like bend the plastic a little bit. That's not really an option here. So if you want to get him posed into a particular position, you really have to be careful and really kind of mess around with the articulation to get it into a spot where it makes sense and where it works. But this, to me, just is not one of those figures that just looks amazing at any angle. I think the Black Series Boba is actually really nice. But if you look at like newer Black Series figures like the Clone Wars Maul, the Mando Ahsoka, it's like you can't make those figures look awkward even if you tried. And with a lot of armored figure arts characters, I feel like it's really difficult to make them not look awkward. The helmet is its own piece and it has a peg inside and then the scarf is also a free floating piece. And then in order to put the head on, you do have to pop the neck off as well. I'm a little bit torn because the head looks okay and it, it, it even looks better on camera. It's a pretty decent likeness to Tamira Morrison. The only thing is just like the face printing is so faint. There's not a lot of detail there. And I guess technically if you were like looking at a face, it wouldn't have that much contrast. It's not like they are cartoon characters where everything is drawn on. Something about this just feels a little bit off. I feel like it needs a little bit more contrast. Let's look at these fellas all together. This is a rough lineup here. <laughs> We've got the Black Series one on the left from the original release. We've got the original Figure Arts release second, which is such a bummer. I mean, like, look at this Han Solo that they did for The Force Awakens. How does the same toy company that makes this likeness and face printing and amazing head sculpt give us this <laughs> Boba Fett in the middle here? And even the one on the right, like how far we have fallen in such a short amount of time. Their Mandalorian head was not much better. I don't know what happened with Figure Arts. We used to get so many amazing characters and now we're just getting Bobas and Mandos and not good ones at that. And okay, let's look at this Fett clone head. This is gonna blow everything out of the water. His heads go for about $50 at like most custom painted heads. And so you are gonna be spending a bit of extra money on top of, you know, $112 for this figure. If you really wanna build it out with a custom head to get the ultimate Boba. Of course, now we're getting into near Hot Toys prices for a six inch figure. But if you are obsessed with this character and you feel like you really need to have him on your shelf, then those options are out there for you. I switched the neck peg out with the Black Series one, which fit the head a little bit better, but was a little bit loose. So I had to kind of just mess with it a little bit. I was just trying to figure out the right proportions and neck length to get the head looking right on this figure, just so I can see how it really looks on the throne. Surprisingly, even with the Fett clone head, I'm just like not really in love with this figure. But of course we need to see how he looks sitting on the actual throne. That's kind of the selling point of this figure. And I think the reason that a lot of people would be getting this set, even if they have alternate Bobas, because I think we all enjoyed Boba Fett in the Mandalorian series rather than in his own series. 
Let's flesh him out a little bit here with this custom sculpted black chrysanthemum that I made, this 8D8 droid that was 3D printed, a Mandalorian black series with a custom head and cloak from OT Customs, and a Fennec Shen that can actually sit quite nicely on the throne once you mess with her just a little bit. I still feel really mid about this figure. The mix of these soft goods with the sculpted plastic always kind of hurts my eyes a little bit. I wish they kind of went the Emperor Palpatine route with the alternate cloak for when he's sitting versus standing. It's not very toyetic, but neither are Figuarts figures. I do really love them though. I have the original trilogy crew in SHF, and I definitely prefer those to the Black series. Look at all that beautiful sculpt plastic. And obviously I have no shortage of Figuarts figures on my bottom shelf here. Luckily I got into collecting these before a lot of these got insanely expensive. So which Boba Fett do you think is going to make it on my empty space here between Mando and Fennec? I'm actually going to go with the Black series. I think this just fits in so much better on the shelf. I think the Fett clone head looks best on this body compared to the Figuarts. The coloring, everything just feels so much better to me. I do hope Hasbro makes a book of Boba Fett Boba. I'm sure they will because we know that Boba sells really well. Please leave a comment, let me know what you think about this figure, give it a rating from 1 to 5 just based on what you've seen in this video. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you would like to see more reviews in the near future as well as a full collection tour that is coming soon. Thank you guys all for watching and I will see you all next time.